Welcome to the sacred day in honor of our beloved Melon Thomas Benedict. It is a celebration. And to begin, we're just going to have you just come into your bodies where you are, feeling your sit bones and your feet on the ground as we lift this light energy up. We're going to take a few deep breaths and just let it out. Deep breath. Ah, you made it, and thank you all for coming. Again, deep breath. Ah, yes. And so we're here in our love. It's okay to cry, it's okay to let it out. It's a, it's a time of remembering our fair and beautiful brother. So with my heart, this is my offering, the, the opening here. We're going to open and bring forth turquoise light around. So as I do this working, you can imagine the turquoise light with me. And I love to put the golden light in it so that we can just really raise the energy field. I'm going to call down some heaven. So... We can call it down together with our hearts. touching day. It's a beautiful day. And I'm really grateful to be here uh, in honor of our great friend Melanie. And in this invocation, uh, I feel that Melanie is already here. I feel that he's totally here within our space and we've opened this sacred space. And he's mostly here because I know they would be here because, honestly, I think he wouldn't want to miss who really showed up. And, who <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Melon, that's probably true. <laughs> that's why the laughter. <laughs> that's so true. And so, in pulling forth from the divine cosmos, and you know, and thinking about where he could possibly be, in my mind, in my heart of hearts, that Melon could be anywhere. And Melon could be everywhere. And in my heart of hearts, I believe that he's in every one of our hearts in some way. And before I invite all of that in uh, deeply, and him in even deeper, that I want to share with you that when I've lived in Santa Cruz, we're really close. 
And when I moved away, in fact, actually sometime in Santa Cruz, we used to always, when we called each other, we would always have this term where we called Rainbow Embassy North calling Rainbow Embassy South. A Rainbow Embassy South reporting to Rainbow Embassy North, he would call me and, you know, and then ask what was happening, right? So it was always our thing. It's always what, you know, Rainbow Embassy. And so in calling him in, I, I, and we always called each other own boy. Now he was more own boy than I was in that and did that on his music and things. But we used to always relate to each other as that because we liked to go into the harmonic vibratory field of the own. It was really, it was kind of important. We did a lot of uh, channeling, chanting, journeying, and all that kind of stuff. And I was, I'm only saying this, I'm helping evoking his presence, you know, uh, and for him to be here. And I, I do already feel him. And so, oh boy, wherever you are, I mean, wherever you are, in or out or in between, uh, this is Rainbow Embassy Gaia calling in Rainbow Embassy Buddhic Field. We'll just use that, right? So Rainbow Embassy Gaia calling forth to report in Rainbow Embassy Buddhic Field. Mel and Thomas, please come down. We invoke your divine presence to please to show up with us in all of your presence in every way that you can so that you can touch our lives so deeply now and in the future as you have, brother, in the past. And what I would like to ask you to do for this moment is just to go in your own heart and to remember, to invite Melon in, and to remember whatever it is that he blessed your life with. I'm sure there is lots of stories that you have of an experience you have on every different level. He was that full spectrum of a being. But I would love you to feel in your own heart and just give thanks, give gratitude to some special gift. Right, some, and to bless that. And so that we can all kind of go in that and to bring, bring him forth all into our own hearts, even collectively. And I would like to do that with an awe, which opens up the heart. And for that, I would like to uh, invite back uh, Celestine Starr and uh, Adora Deva, and so that we can kind of all bring him in to our own hearts and into the, into our hearts. <laughs> There's no place to go. <laughs> Deep breath.
And welcome everyone to this ceremony where we're honoring Melon. I invite you now to take out your bead, and if you do not have one, raise your hand, and Laura will bring you one. As Richard mentioned earlier, Melon liked to be called Ohm and Ohm Boy. And many times when we would travel and he would be doing lectures, he would do what he called the three ohms, the rolling ohms. So in a moment, we're going to do three ohms, and they don't all have to be at the same time. He'll just do three ohms. And with that, we'll infuse Melon's presence into the bead, and you'll be able to take that home with you. No, Mommy's just waiting for a bead. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Yes, we can read it. It looks like you know everybody's doing. Wait, rolling on. It's rolling on. Um, this is a celebration too. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you could have him sit and be quiet, <laughs> putting a little humor into his audience. Right. Whispering. Nor would we want that. Right. And Melon, you notice that people are here. Melon thought maybe no one would show up, so. He's grateful yeah. that the people that showed up did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, we all have our bead. Mm -hmm. Place it on the altar. <coughs> on the altar. Um, oh, the, sure. Let's bring the rest of the beads. Let's place them on the this. Beads. Great. Yes, there yes. You They'll be blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Well, near Saibaba. Okay, great. That's what Melon and I go. Where are Melon goes? Near Saibaba. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do three <laughs> rolling ohms right now. Taking a deep breath. <laughs> You're on it. You're on it. He knew he left it in good hands. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be here. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, Melon, we honor you, we bless you, and we bless and honor all the people that are here and all the people that are here in spirit who couldn't be here. Melon Thomas Benedict was born March 2nd, 1949, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And he passed away on March 31st, 2017. He left behind his brother Michael Benedict, his uncle Jerry Benedict, and a former partner of his for 10 years, myself. He also leaves his friends and colleagues, Celestine Starr, J.R. Collier, Richard and Linda Van Dunk, Darlene Shea Conkey, couldn't be here, Tom Batley, as well as Carolyn Byers,
Bob Bell, and Kim Kasdorf, all from North Carolina, PMH Atwater, and a loving community of friends. Mellon was a true Renaissance man, an artist, a musician, an inventor. Family knew him as a master stained glass artist. He, he even invented stained glass cutting scissors that would be used worldwide as a standard for the industry. And following his musical talents, Mellon spent the early years playing in a band in Atlanta, writing and playing music. He enjoyed playing his guitar until the very end. I'd like to invite Ami up to play Mellon's guitar, to play a little music for us. Mellon was known worldwide as a luminary being, a scientist, a visionary, a speaker, a spiritual leader, an inventor, a workshop leader, and an author of countless articles on the near-death experience. He offered his genius, his sacred wisdom, and authentic love to his family and friends all over the world. He enjoyed being on countless radio shows, as well as producing several audio series, including White Buffalo Wisdom, Insights from the Other Side, and Journey Through the Light and Back. Although he never produced a book, his story was published in many other people's books on the near-death experience. Being an inventor, Mellon always looked at the world with an eye for how he could make it better, asking, what does the world need? Some of Mellon's light technology inventions include the Starship, the InLight Pro, and the Dream Spa. He created other inventions, some very successful and others not, such as the Ultra Spa, which he was not yet able to offer to the public at the time he transitioned. In his role as a filmmaker, Mellon Thomas made several commercials. He worked on the movie Deliverance and on the television series Unsolved Mysteries. Mellon traveled several times to the Philippines where he researched psychic surgery, working with powerful shamans to discover the hidden secrets of shamanism. It was during this time that he realized the chi energy used by the shamans could also be similarly harnessed with the energy of light. Mellon liked to capture his experience in photos and film, making many short movies of his travels and experiences. In 2012, he produced a film called The Spirit of Gaia in which he details the views of his history, or the views of history on Earth, its people, showing where we came from and where we're going. Actually, with the movie, The Spirit of Gaia, I was one of the people who filmed that movie in North Carolina in 2012.
So Melon and I first met in 2006 in Los Gatos in Shanti and Jay's Cloud Nine Spa, where I was participating in a wrinkle study with one of his inventions that had not yet come out yet. We became partners the next year in business and love in 2007. <coughs> Mellon had many different sides, as many of you know. He had the public persona and he had the private person. The public person was a master storyteller, enchanting people wherever we would go. There would be a group of people, whenever he started to talk, would just surround him. Although he certainly liked to be the center of attention, he liked others to shine their light as well. He encouraged me several times before he would be doing his public talks to read poetry to set the stage. In Mellon's private life, he was pretty much a home buddy. He loved to stay home, cook a really good dinner, and watch a movie. He also loved to play music. And some of my favorite times were he would play the drum, and we would chant, or he'd play the guitar, and I'd play the piano, and we would pray together. Mellon also really liked to create moods with light. He loved putting light on pictures, altar, and just changing the whole vibration of what you were seeing. That was like magic. He loved his tiger lilies like his babies. He treated those flowers. He had them for the last 40 years. And the tiger lilies, his tiger lilies are right here in front. He kept them year after year. As Richard said earlier, Mellon used to call himself Ohm, an Ohm boy. And when we would go out to dinner, he would give his name as Ohm. And so when they would call, he would say they'd be blessing us and blessing the food. <laughs> Mellon also believed in the power of ritual and ceremony and used sacred objects in his life. He collected double dorges, um, he also had deep spiritual connections. One of them was with White Buffalo Woman, and the other was Sai Baba. White Buffalo Woman was his main teacher, and he channeled many channelings from his visitations with the light with her. This is one of the things he channeled from White Buffalo Woman. You have the power and the gift to see the miraculous everywhere. Bless every moment and the power to create magic. You are the manifestation of light, the light of life. Take the time and make the space, make it ceremony for your continued expression of the miraculous, the magical and the sacred. Mellon was also an avid writer. He wrote every single day, sometimes on napkins. Wherever we were, he was always writing. He'd write his ideas, his songs, his poetry. And now I'd like to read the last poem Mellon ever wrote. He gave me a gift, and I'm going to read that poem he wrote to me. It's called Moonbeams, Moonbeams and Fireflies. Sometimes I forget how beautiful the world is, then I see your smile, and I remember love. I dream of you dancing to moonbeams, you light up my heart, and I remember love. Golden fireflies, golden fireflies dance with you, they sparkle like little fairies in the night, and I remember love. The nature of your spirit embodies the emerald green Tara, and I remember love. 
I am blessed to be loved by you. To love you is heaven on earth. Thank you. It's very beautiful, Adora. So it is time for sharing. And we have a beautiful gentleman who's come a long ways. I'd like to have you come on up and uh, share with us now. Please welcome Stephen Peter. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I first met Mellon at a party at Arbor's in about 2002. And I immediately felt about him something I'm sure every single person in this room, whoever knew Mellon, feels as well. Mellon was a soul whose words had weight. What Adora just said about how whenever he began to speak, People listened because he had a sense of not only being able to hold people's attention with very, very compelling thoughts and ideas, but his whole ambiance, his whole way of presenting his ideas. Boy, I immediately tuned right into him at Arbor's party and we became good friends ever since. I first started working with Mellon in a professional sense. I do search engine optimization. I get people top ranking on Google. He had just gotten a website up and working with Bob. And he asked me to optimize it, to, to dial in his keywords so that he would be coming up on Google. And as I learned more and more about Mellon's life experience, where I would, he would begin to tell me you know, this much as an, as an anecdote or an aside, and then I draw them out more. Oh my God, we could spend the next hour enraptured by what he was telling me about. His own life experience, everything from growing up back in the Carolinas, uh, this father who was uh, raised and teaching him how to use plastic bottles as a silencer, who had all of these really hard military background as a father, who he was raised this way, but I would never get a glimpse of that from knowing him had he not told me, to various powers that he had. Actually, his reputation preceded him when I met him at Arbor's. I had heard about this guy who could look at a field of clover and walk right up and pull out the four-leaf clover. Mm -hmm. He couldn't explain how he did it, but no one could deny the powers that he had this way. Mellon's also a soul who anybody who knew him and knew that twinkle in his eye. He's the soul, I would say, has quickness to joy. That ability to take something simple somebody said, and he's that close to humor that he could turn it with irony or with simile and, and turn something in a way that would remind me of what Alan Watts said, that there's a greater affinity between the words cosmic and comic than the mere similarity of the words, right? <laughs> Everybody who knows Mellon knows this about him. And I've, I've been a writer and communicator all my life, so we would share a lot of time refining our ideas. I wrote the book, The Comic Sutra, How to Have Great Laughing Sex, because I think if more people were laughing and loving, it would be a better world. I've spent decades collecting humorous sexual anecdotes from all over the world, so I'm not easily shocked, and I hope no one finds what I'm about to say offensive. But I gotta put right up there in the top of the quips I've ever heard was Mellon when we were at a party in about 2004, and a woman who he just met asked him what he did, and without blinking an eye or missing a bait, he said, I'm a stuntman for porno films. I do the dangerous acts. <laughs> Mellon had quickness to joy big time. I see everybody in this room feels that humor that he was that close to. Being able to put two things together that we don't expect together, which is what makes people laugh. That's the essence of quickness to joy. How many people here know, do you know why you laugh when somebody tickles you, but you don't laugh when you tickle yourself? It's because people are getting close to your sensitive places and we laugh out of tension relief. But boy, Mellon, of all the souls I've known in this lifetime, was right there, that close that he could take 
A simple statement, turn a few syllables around and mirror it right back in a way that would just make people laugh as I see bringing to all of you what I just did with that simple quip of his. Mellon was calling me about two or three times a week for probably about the last three months of his life. We had a lot of real long, very heartfelt conversations. And I have to share with you, I want to share with you, a great gift he left me in one of those conversations because we all know what a Renaissance man he was. We all know you could make a statement about a simple subject and he could expand upon that and leave me with so much. Is that melancholy? Is that melancholy? Humor is incongruence. Two things together you don't expect together. And it makes us laugh from our brain being stretched. I can think of very few souls in my lifetime. I have had my synapses stretched and my brain stretched so much as the conversations I've had with Mellon because he had such a rich experience in his road of life that he could draw upon knowledge from here, from here, from here. And of course, no one have I ever met who has had the insights that he has regarding what we're all doing here on planet Earth and our, our experience here in this lifetime. And of what the insights he shared with all of us, of what truly lives on when we are no longer breathing on this planet. So I had a lot of very deep and long conversations with Mellon over the last three months. And what I want to share with you, I'll remember for the rest of my life and be one of those guideposts that reminds us what we're truly doing here. And in one of these conversations, it was probably about six weeks before his passing, he said to me, you know, of all the things that I've done in my life, at this point in my life, I'm thinking very deeply what I want to do with the rest of my life. I probably was the last person to speak to him alive at about 1.45, the day of his passing. And it was the end of the month. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wrap things up, and I'm going to come over and see you here beginning the next month once my time opens up. And I'm choking up because I didn't get to do that. But if there's one thing, one thing I would love all of you to take away with here today, It's that none of us are promised tomorrow. It's each other that gives us relevance. Take strength from the things that feed your soul the most. Thank you, Melon, for passing on the love. I'm going to uh, sing this for Melon. And I'm going to play it on his guitar.
Very beautiful, Diana. Thank you. Really from the heart. Yes. So now we'd like to hear from our beloved Richard Van Dunk, one of Mellon's oh. treasured only brothers. happy uh, and it's very sad uh, at the same time. I I'm happy in that I had the opportunity to even meet Mellon or know Mellon uh, and I'm extremely grateful for the ability to be really to be called a uh, friend and to explore consciousness, to explore this life, to journey with him, to a party with him, to, I don't know much what we didn't do, you know, and, the, and he was amazing, an amazing human being, if I was to sum it all up. He tried to get the most that he could out of life, and I agree with Adora that he had a, a persona that was different no matter where he was. That's because he allowed himself to be whatever he wanted or needed to be freely in whatever context that was. I could see him in business meetings where he was, I thought, oh my God, after like partying with him and being at the beach and just doing a lot of, you know, just craziest stuff that we could do, you know, and maybe hiking a mountain or whatever it was. And the very next day I go, oh my God, he's going to walk into this business meeting. Is he going to be that melon or show up? And he would be boom, 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 precise. It was like, wow. Uh, very, very uh, glad to be his friend uh, because I got to explore a whole lot of myself as well in doing that. He helped me to expand my own horizons, to be more creative uh, because he was an incredible, uh, I would say an artist. There are those that come into this life with certain gifts and those, there are those that come in a little more conscious, I think, than others in a different kind of way. We all, all have our own path. But he loved creativity. And he loved to do something like the flowers or whatever where he could see the benefits of his creativity in motion. And I entered first the door with him by being fascinated by a little light. I, I was doing a business venture with somebody who was a doctor, uh, Gene... Putnam that was here in town, and he brought over this little healing laser light, single light. All he had was one laser light, and I went, I want one of those, because he said, oh, it can like affect your cells and do all this stuff, and this was like almost 30 years ago, and it can affect your light in your body, and it's going to heal you, I go, really? You know, it's like I was into all this spiritual stuff, and meditating, and doing the light, and traveling all the world, trying to study with every guru, master, priest, priestess I could, just finding ways of uh, uh, being more conscious uh, in this life. And so I was really attracted to that, and, and I'll speed up my story here because there's a lot of people that might want to share. And, but anyway, I was attracted to the light, so I got this connection uh, to call Mellon, so I call him up, and he goes, well, I don't usually talk to people. I go, what? And he goes, well, but I really want to know your light, and we start joking with me, talk, talking back and forth, so I finally bugging him, I set up a time to come out to his house, and we get to his house and he goes, well, I usually charge $650 to have dinner with anybody. <laughs> and this is like 30 years ago. He goes, you're pretty fortunate. Did you bring any dinner? <laughs> and I go like, well, then I'd have to charge you. I said, that's okay. I mean, we're not even close to equal because I charge $1,500 to have dinner with somebody. So you only owe me, you know, <laughs> 750 So I goes. Right away then, he just looked and he smiled at me and he, we had this hug and then it was supposed to have been a 15 minute meeting and I was there for over three and a half hours. We're just talking and sharing and da 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 and we just really, really hit it off. So we started off on the vibration of the light and I always have that connection to the light with him. And from there, you know, it grew into two or three lights and I helped promote, you know, the first little box that had two little lights on it and we we're putting it on our you know veins or of our blood and lighting ourselves up and we thought that was really cool but it was 
you know, to do that four or five times a day, holding a little box, people thought you were a little strange, but that's okay, you know, we were getting our blood infused with the light, you know, frequencies. To all the way, you know, and helping him with a lot of ideas and principles and testing, oh my God, the kind of things that we tested that luckily didn't come to market, <laughs> but uh, we tested it all, right, and, you know, all, all <laughs> and we tested a lot of ways to get there and to get, you know, information and all the rest of that, and a lot of good things came from the light, you know, and so anyway, all the way to his invention of the light chair. So, uh, really great technologies. I do want to mention to you, uh, one thing that he told me that he invented, I thought is really, really cool, that a lot of people don't know about, is that you see all the kids running around with the little lights in their shoes. Yeah, anybody see that? Yeah. Well, that was his idea, some like 25 years ago, or actually even before I met him. And he got a patent on that, and then they waited on it for over 10 years, and it went off, he did get a little bit of money, but... Every time you see little dancing lights around, he inspired that, which inspired a whole lot of lights everywhere. So his vibration is going out in the light field in places a lot of people don't know. And a lot, what he would want you to know also is whatever you're doing in your life, you may not know how you're affecting another human being. That one gift, that one moment that you just say hello or you are grateful or give a hug uh, in a time when somebody, you don't, is in stress, that's going to wake them up. That's going to inspire them. It might be the very thing that makes them make a different decision that changes the world. And so we're always changing the world by who we are, especially if we're uh, living through our kindness like what he did. Uh, the other thing, you know, real quick, is that he, he loved to tell stories. Anybody know him? He, he was quite a prankster with it, actually. Um, so, yeah, I remember he wanted, I'll just tell this one quick one, is that he had this whole bit, I think that he says, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be a millionaire, you've got to be able to join the millionaire club. I said, okay, okay, I'm working on that just like you are. He said, no, 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 he says, like, but I've got it, I've got it, I've got this rich, I, I'm paraphrasing, Saudi prince billionaire that's going to buy my coffee tree. I have a coffee tree, but it's a spe I said, a million dollars for a coffee tree, yeah, it's fun. I had this guy, a horticulturist, I think that's what you call it, blended an orange tree and a coffee tree. And it's going to produce orange coffee. And this billionaire is going to have just his special friends come, and he's going to make only five pounds out of this coffee tree and sell it for a million dollars each so he can make five million off of it and I get a million. I mean, stories like that just abound <laughs> from him. And he was serious. I thought, okay, all right, you've just been smoking or something. <laughs> Send me some of that stuff too. That's pretty good. <laughs> no, or whatever. You know, and uh, anyway, lots of stories, a lot of great humor. He just has, I'll finish with one thing. He, he's been bugging me to tell you one thing. That to make sure no matter what I did, today or whatever in his honor celebration presence is that he wants me to say that he's not dead. He's not dead. He still lives. He lives on. And as long as you have a memory, a thought of him, it will always exist with you. You have to realize that whatever you're doing is creating memories in the world. Everything you do is creating a memory in the world. Uh, it's a refraction of your own mind, your own consciousness. Every image that you ever think is still stored in the universe. Okay, that's why we need to become more responsible in, in who we are and as a species and to communicate from our love from our hearts. Um, and I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. I just wanted to let you know he, he's not. He lives in you. He, he, the body is gone. Okay, the body may be gone, and that's even hard for me. But the body is gone, but he prepared for all of that. And he wants you to prepare for that. And not that it's going to be quick, but he did a whole process. If you're going to live, it's part of life. We had many, I mean, I talked to him almost every day for, you know, months before he died. Several times sometimes. Too many times that he wouldn't even answer because he's just calling me and calling me back. Uh, I love you, Melon. I love you so much. I really do. I'm just grateful for my life and my opportunity uh, with you, and brother, I will see you in the light. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. 
And in case you didn't know, his presence is here in this beautiful black pyramid, which was his request to Adora. And we manifested it, and she preciously put his words, leave a message, I'll be right back. <laughs> Very good, huh? Yeah. So, praise be to the material melon, and then praise be to the spirit. So, Omni, yeah, I believe you have something to share. So, Omni Toba. 2007, 2008, somebody forwarded me, forwarded me an email, and um, it was one of those emails I opened, and it just stopped me in my tracks. And it was about five pages of uh, somebody describing a near-death experience. And it, it hit me so strongly that I actually, I read it over and over and um, ended up trying to contact the person that wrote it, um, that was known. And um, I didn't hear back from him, but several years later, probably three or four years later, I was playing music at an event at a v church, like this one. And uh, Melvin was a speaker that day. And so we got to spend some time with him. Um, I feel very blessed to have met Melvin. And um, this is a song um, I wrote for a friend's memorial that I thought might be appropriate.
as you travel through the door. You live in our hearts, though your body is no more. Can you feel our love tonight as you travel through the door? May you merge into the highest light as you travel through the door. here helping to set up so I just want to thank Tom over here and thank you for the media and our beloved LB in the back holding she helped bring it all together and our Kaya who did this beautiful visual show here so really bring it together So I think we have Esther uh, Francis, and she would like to come up if you'd like. So I didn't know Mel and Thomas nearly as well as probably most of you here. And I was kind of wondering, Adora, why you invited me to speak, and I think now I know what it is. So it's 2010, and I'm in a really remote area of the Catskill Mountains. I had come across Mellon's work somehow, or website, and I was really touched by what he had to say, particularly about Gaia. And I had created a CD called Mother Earth Calls, and in it it had a song called Gaia. The whole CD was about that. Well, I sent it to him, and I sent it with just that of that, wanting to share this mutuality and kinship. So, a few weeks later, maybe a month later, it's nighttime. I'm in a really remote place. I'm talking bare in the backyard remote. And I get a telephone call, and it's Melon Thomas. <laughs> And he says, I'm going to be on a TV, uh, not a TV, a radio show tonight in uh, New York City. And I'd like to ask your permission if I could talk about your CD. And <laughs> can you imagine? I, mean, I was thrilled. And it was so, I'm an astrologer, so it was so Uranian. It was so totally out of the blue. <laughs> and of course I said yes, and he told me when it was on, and I stayed up, you know, till 11.30 or whatever to hear it. And I think why I was asked to share is that it shows this extraordinary generosity. And, I mean, didn't have to do that, and it, it just, the gift in, in my life to... Sometimes I think we're most challenged to recognize our own gifts and to have the courage 
to realize that they came through us like our children and they're here to be shared. So that was a great gift. Then I got to come out here. My son lives in SoCal and we created this possibility to meet. And that's when I met Adora because he came and picked me up and we, we shared a wonderful meal and uh, the light device and, and uh, just always a joy whenever able to meet them. And I have to say Adora and I showed up more and <laughs> it seemed over and over we have the same kind of things we gravitate to. And I just want to acknowledge, though, what a great gift. And I, I do feel his presence very much here and feel internally and feel kind of a, a, a reunion with and just a lot of gratitude to be part of the circle today. And thanks to Melon for bringing us all together. Thank you, Esther. That's beautiful. And all the sharing that we have. And I'd like to do a little sharing myself. I'm Celestine Starr. I've been Mellon's friend for about 30 years. So I have prepared a little sweet thing. I want to thank Amanda, too. Thank you, Amanda, for helping Adora and I pull it together. You keep us calm. Thank you. And our Karma Moffat. Beautiful awakening of the heart. <laughs> All right. Let's see where we are here. I'm going to put these on so I can read between the tears. It is an honor to stand before you today, my deepest friends and community, to share a few precious gems. O Mani Padmi Hum, jewels in the center of the lotus, from which comes the light and the way. The light I speak of today is the light of my dearest friend, Melon Thomas Benedict. We spend a lot of time together sharing about life, even more so in his final days, contemplating the unfoldment of his new lifestyle. It was an extremely transformative time for Mellon, as many of you know, on all levels. Everything turned upside down, releasing, letting go to the very core of his soul. It was challenging, and yet through it all, he remained steadfast to his purposeful conviction, the carrying and upliftment of humanity to the very end. This was shown clearly in his taking time to work at a homeless shelter not too far from his home. And this was his brilliant idea of the day. I'm going to go down and work at a homeless shelter. Wow! And I'm like, yeah! So we had some exciting conversations about that. And he was a mentor to me in that way. He was clear, brilliant, and true of heart. So Mel and I met in 1997 through our friendship with Penny Slinger and Christopher Hills. After a very interesting conversation about light and different things that we did together, he invited me to his home in Aptos to experience his photonic light bed. I wasn't sure if I was going to start a romantic relationship with him or just be friends. As it turned out, we remained lifelong friends and I'm ever grateful to have you in my life, Melon, no matter which side of the veil that you are on. I love you. My joy with you, my dearest friend, was the sharing of the light, quantum biology sciences, pyramidology, and our mind-expanding talks about the world beyond the veil. We each, through our own near-death experiences, touched heaven immersing ourselves in the totality of the Godhead. I am forever grateful for our friendship throughout the years. In my heart, 
We shall continue sharing our lives together, Melon, walking the path of conscious awakening, bringing the wisdom from beyond the veil to the world. I am so honored to have you as my friend and now a guide from the light. O Mani Padme Hum, as they say in Egypt, I will keep you in my heart forever. In the way of the light, we call for the pure love energies, the sacred wisdom as a guiding light upon the way. To this, I wish to read from the papyrus of Ani, some call the Egyptian Book of the Dead. He was quite a spiritual being, so in honor of his, his passing, I shall read. We'll say transitioning, actually. All right. Kahando rehunu peret anhuru sepe subsum per hare naturu hetinunim hamente per ate heruin kereste. selects thee as the ruler of light in the center of the great marsh. The celestial way is open for those towards the horizon. The God's spirits gladden with thy advance. Thy sit upon the lofty seat of the great monad who is in the city of the sun. Thou Lead us, the true ones. Thou satisfy the immortal ones of light. Thine own bounty is that in which the great divinities flourish and of which the souls themselves are sated. It was thought who created them, who made them steadfast. He rescued the creation from negativity. His grace settled thee in thine abode of cities. It is he who followed after thee in this thy name of city. Lift thyself up when this greatest substance and wine were given to him. The eternal sacrifice will be given. This from the papyrus of Ani. I place these words at your feet, Melon, in my heart, blessed be. So with that, we'll bring this back to you, Adora, if you'd like to come up and say some words. Is there, is there anybody else who would like to say a few words? Please, Karma. Uh, I only have a few words. Um, uh, but it was like uh, my last conversation with Mellon. And uh, he called me a few times and uh, just wanted to talk. I said, well, we're going to talk about, we wanted to talk about what do you think happens when you lose your body? And we talked. I said, well, your, your body's impermanent. It doesn't last. Um, but your soul is always, always intact. 
And, uh, we, and I came to the understanding that in the end, the love you make is equal to the love you take. And that was understanding. And so we had that conversation, and it was pretty clear. And then, um, and then I thought, you know, I didn't know he was going through any problems with his life. And, uh, and then it was a few weeks later, I get word that he had passed. So I was like a very, I was really fortunate to be able to speak to him about the doorway and, uh, and assure him that his love would carry through to the other side. And, um, and just a moment ago, I dropped my bead, and it's a crystal bead, and it's very clear, and I lost it. I went, oh no, where'd my melon bead go? <laughs> and then I came to realization what, he's in me. I don't need the bead, he's within me. But then, uh, miraculously, I, I found it again, so I... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, melon. <laughs> You're great. Thank you. talk to me about the dark side of the light. As some of you know, the last few years were not very happy for him. For one, he never got over losing his company, his light company. And another thing, for the last 10 years, he was taken to court over and over again by a certain publisher who prevented him from telling his story and writing a book. And in the end, he was even asked to take his website down. The same publishers put a lien on his estate, and he died without any money. Mellon also believed in legacy. He believed on having your light go on He had several, or has several audio recordings, video recordings, writings, information on light technology. And it's my wish to have his legacy go on. And I'm hoping people will step forth to help complete the ultra spa and to help make a biography. He had several recordings Movies of um, Clay Baxter, The Crystal Skull. He had a recording uh, company where he did, in the 80s, several New Age people. And he videotaped all of that. Several, several very well-known people. Christopher, Christopher Hills. So he has all those videotapes, movies, audios. And I would love to be able to bring them forth to the world. So I'm ho hoping that people will step forth so we can bring all of this. That would be my gift and his gift. I even saw a video where uh, a Serge King doing a talk, a Seth talk. The only time he ever taught about Seth. And Mel recorded that. This event is also crowdfunded, and I'm grateful for all the people who participated to help me pay for the space and all the other things that I've had to pay for. And I have a real delight at this moment. I have um, the film. In 2012, when we filmed um, The Spirit of Gaia, we came home, and before we put it in final, the final way to get it out to the public, he wanted to read the poem that he wrote right after his near death. And I must have filmed that ten times <laughs> before he said, okay, that's good. So we have the film where he read uh, his first poem, and we're going to ask uh, Tom or Kaya to put that on now. 
And now I'd like to share a poem with you. It is the first poem I wrote after my near-death experience. It is entitled, Let Love Rise. And it goes like this. We who are here now are the creations of the first word. We who are here now are the rays of the first light. We who are here now are the seeds of the first garden. And now, for one moment in eternity, let us open our hearts and let love rise. Let love rise and fill us with gratitude. Look again. For deep in every human soul there is a knowing that all life is a gift beyond measure and that love, yes, love, love, love is the heart, the breath, and the meaning of life. May there always be more love. May there always be more life. And may we all thrive and live forever again and again and again. O oh, dear Mother, O oh, dear Father, O oh, dear Universe, the greatest gift I can return to you is to love and cherish my life. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. The wisdom he received, or how he connected with white buffalo woman. Am I on? White buffalo woman. There we go. And so this chant is dedicated to him and that wisdom he received. And if, if you want to know, there's a, a picture of white buffalo woman here on the altar. Can you say your names? I'm Laura. Yeah. It was um, an honor to know Mel, and the last time I saw him was at Thanksgiving at my house. For all the strays who didn't have families to go to, <laughs> um, Adora was there with her son and a few other friends. It was beautiful. What's that? Okay. I, mean, I need to get up a little bit more, I think. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your sharing, for music, for everything. It's been beautiful. <sighs> Fill me with thy vision, fill me with thy grace, fill me with thy wisdom, fill me with thy peace. White buffalo woman, I see thy vision, white buffalo woman, I see thy grace, white buffalo. Thy wisdom, white buffalo woman, I seek thy peace. Fill me with thy vision, fill me with thy grace, fill me with thy wisdom, fill me with thy peace. This is the time I want to thank all of you for being here, all the many, many helpers that helped bring this together, especially my honored Celestine, that I couldn't have done this without you, so I'm just so honored. And um, I, I invite all of you to come celebrate as we continue celebration in the other room. Any of the men, if you'd like a hat of his, I have as many thousands of hats in the other room, to, to, or a woman, uh, you can take one of his hats. I, I offer you to take that. Um, there's pictures of him um, and all his stained glass, the original pictures there, a lot of his albums. Um, so browse during our time of social, and um, thank you, LB. Yes, so, so thank you everyone for attending.